Hello everyone and welcome to Training Tuesday for April 6, 2021. The snake featured in this week's video is named Ariam. She is a coastal carpet python, Morelia spilota mcdowli, and she's turning three years old in June. If you've been following the channel for a while, you're probably already familiar with Ariam, but for those of you new to the channel, I'll give you a little bit of background information. Ariam was donated to Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary for fundraising purposes, along with four other snakes by a local breeder. Three of the snakes were adopted out very quickly upon arrival at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary, which is a 501c3 animal sanctuary in Colorado and they were adopted out prior to their first feeding. But two of the snakes, Arium, the coastal carpet python, and another snake, Jayla, an albino Darwin carpet python, were here for their first feeding and then for subsequent feedings. And any time an animal is here for any length of time, I give them environmental stimulation, mental and physical exercise, enrichment opportunities, and I always train them. Even for dogs and horses that are here temporarily, I always do some sort of training with them. And so Ariam started target training from her very first feeding here. She had a couple of people that were interested in her, but no one followed through with her adoption. And after Ariam had been here for several weeks and I had been working with her, she was excelling in her training and she was starting to explore some of her enrichment options and come out of her enclosure for exercise. So at that point, I no longer felt that it was fair to send Ariam away to another home that might not give her the same enrichment opportunities or training opportunities that she was getting here. Because behavior science does inform us that once an animal or human has been given certain things that might be considered enriching and then those things are taken away, that it is actually worse than if they had never had them in the first place. And so I adopted Ariam personally. I paid her adoption fee as well as Jayla's and she went from the custody of Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary to my ownership at Behavior Education LLC which is my behavior and training business. This training session was recorded on January 17th 2021 and I did a total of three training repetitions with her and a recess period. So you've just seen her first two training repetitions. She did an excellent job shifting out onto the activity station and she did exactly what she was supposed to do during her targeting session. She oriented towards the target. She followed the target initially onto the activity station and then she oriented to and followed the target a short distance on the activity station. She paused at the target and then she waited for her reinforcement. Now she's in a recess period. This is a period of time where I am interacting with her as far as my presence goes. I'm taking videos of her, I'm taking photographs of her, I'm walking near her on the activity stand, but I do not have the target, I do not have food, and I do not have feeding tongs. So she's free to explore the activity station. And my purpose for doing this is to help her discriminate between when she has the opportunity to earn food reinforcement and when no food reinforcement is available. And I want her to start learning some appraisal skills, which means that she's able to appraise when it's time to get into feeding mode and eat and when she should not be in feeding mode and she's not going to eat. Ariam is definitely in feeding mode now. She's in a very species typical ambush position on the activity stand. That is because she recognized historical antecedents prior to us starting repetition three of this training session. She saw me preparing the rodent, she saw me get the feeding tongs, she saw me picking up the target and she sees the target. Now I'm making a huge mistake here. I should not be holding the rodent and the tongs anywhere near the station or the target because she's way past the stage of training where we are pairing the target with food. I realized what I was doing and that's why I moved the feeding tongs and the rodent down behind my leg. So the reinforcer should be out of sight until Ariam has done the desired behavior and then the reinforcement should be delivered. So I made a correction there, but she's now in a very heightened state. She's ready for that food to appear at any time. And in fact, she already saw the food because of my mistake. And so what I'm going to do here is try to help communicate to her just a little bit 
that I still want her to interact in some way with the target. So I flatten the target, which usually is a signal to her to stop moving and tongue flick at or touch the target. So in other words, I moved it from a vertical to a horizontal position. But I've already made the situation a little bit unclear for her because I had that rodent so close to the activity. So now I'm using a combination of movement of the target and flattening of the target to communicate to her that I still want her to pause at the target and tongue flick at it or touch it. And then the food is going to be delivered as reinforcement once I get that behavior from her. And she did a great job. And overall, this training session just went really well. You will notice that Ariam is now in a different enclosure than the one you'd previously seen her in. She's in a four foot long by 18 inch tall by 18 inch wide PVC enclosure. And after this training session and her exercise activity, Ariam went ahead and put herself away when she was ready. She's a beautiful snake, both mentally and physically, and she's just doing an awesome job in our program here.